Hi, welcome to Denver Parks and Rec at Home. My name is Haley, and today we're starting with the basics. We're going to be painting a still life. Uh, what you need for this is a canvas. Uh, if you have a small easel, that'll be really helpful. I have three different sizes of paint brushes here. Um, something to wipe your paint brushes on, different acrylic paints, and some water. And of course, you need your subject. When you start with your object, you want to look and see where your light source is coming from. So because we're in a studio, we have our light source coming from above, and you can see that directly shown on the object. Um, right here you have the light spots, and then you'll notice that there also is some shading. So because of the light, we have these natural shadows kind of at the bottom, and then given off by the object here on our mat. It's our natural instinct when we want something to be darker to add black. But today we're actually going to work with complementary colors. And if you don't know what complementary colors are, I have them right here. In art, there are certain colors that naturally complement each other. And these are the basic ones. You have purple and yellow, orange and blue, and red and green. And so we use these colors both to bring out each other in a painting, but also when you're trying to create a shade, uh, you use the complement to take it down a tone. So uh, for instance, if I wanted this to be darker and I added black, it would get darker, but the color wouldn't shine through as much. Whereas this is kind of an orangey color. So if I looked at my complementary colors, I would see orange and then know that if I added a little bit of blue to the orange, that would make the object darker in a more natural way. So I'm gonna go over that and show you guys an example right now. So here I have my palette, right? and I've created an orange, and let's say I want to make it a little bit darker. Well, this is what happens when you add the black. See, it's kind of mucky, almost a brown, orange, gray combination. But when I use blue, just a little bit, the color still stays intact, but you can take it down a notch. So what this is essentially doing is we're lowering the intensity of the orange without taking away the vibrancy. And this will be easier to see on the canvas too. So when we're first starting our painting and there's no wrong way to do it. This is just how I do it. Um, we're gonna pick sort of a neutral color. So this orange would actually be fine. And we're going to start to make our outline. And when you're making your outline, I don't want you to think too hard about uh, whether it's perfect. There'll be lots of time to edit and go back over it. And painting is all about the layers. So we'll be building layer as layers as we paint. So remember that when you're thinking about the object, we don't want to base it on what our brain thinks. We want to actually look at it, and it's important when you're painting to always be looking at your object. So I'm going to start with a general image of what I'm seeing. And keep in mind your canvas size because you don't want it running off the page. I've done that many times. That's why we're just doing a general outline is because we don't want to get too detailed and then have it be much more difficult to go back and edit. So it's good just to put the object on the canvas. So when you're painting your object, it's not only about the object that you're painting, but it's important to note the negative space, so the space that's not the object, um, and how this plays with the object. So for example, if I look here, I'll see this negative space, and then I'll look at my can, and there's a shape here as well. 
Um, and it's important to mimic that and take that into consideration uh, when you're creating your object. That kind of helps set the object's uh, placement as well as its shape. So once you have your basic object down, right, it's not perfect, but it's on the canvas and we have a shape that we know that we're going to be working with, then you want to start adding in the background. And the reason why the background is important in painting is because unlike with um, pencils where you can erase your mistakes, you don't really have that option here. So for example, here I made this line a little too big. I want it to be a little flatter. So what I would do is I would take my background color, which I'm going to use blue. It really doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. And you want to start adding that in. And these two colors are going to start playing with each other. So if you end up adding too much background, then you can go back over when the paint dries with the acrylic and vice versa. If your object isn't exactly how you want it, the background's a great way to edit those mistakes. Once we have our base and a little bit of background in, we're going to start to add the shading. And the shading does not need to be representative of the color at all. I will usually start shading the picture with orange and then go back over, because like I said, it's all about the layers, so what you start with the base is definitely not going to be what you end up with. So again, we're going to look at our object, and we see that this part's a little brighter right on the top. Maybe the rim is a little bit brighter, so we're going to take note of that and have that be replicated in our painting. And again, this part is the darker part, right? Or maybe over here. And then when we start to add in the towel, you'll see there's some shadows from the watering can on that as well. So to begin, we're going to start with our mid-tones, which is not the super bright parts and not the really dark parts, but everything else in the middle that's kind of neutral, right? And I'm going to use orange. And like we talked about earlier, I want it to be a little less intense, right? Um, this isn't exactly super bright, um, especially from the material. So with that, I'm going to add a little bit of blue, not too much, just a little bit to tone it down. And then I'm going to start putting in my mid-tones. And this can just be pretty quick. You're going to be working mostly in color blocks when doing this. And the nice thing about acrylic is that the layers will dry pretty quickly. So while you're painting one part, uh, the other part that you just painted will start to dry and soon enough you'll be able to go over that again. Again, I'm looking at my subject and noticing some of the parts are a little darker than I thought they were. The handle's not all bright. There, you know, there's some darker spots in there too, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And maybe you start to draw your platform. So if you have your object on a table or towel, maybe that's when you start to put those in too. My towel is blue, so I'm going to add kind of a lighter blue to the base. And I tend to jump around when I'm painting, so to each their own. Do it at your own speed, where you feel like your subject needs the most attention. Here I'm noticing from my angle that the towel bumps up a little bit, so it cuts off some of my object. That's fine to go ahead and start to put that in too. So 
So I've added most of my midtones for now. We'll go back and add details into that later. Now what we want to do is add in our darker spots. So if you remember from before, I'm going to be using orange, and I'll mix that orange with some blue, which will bring down the intensity but not muddle the color. Sometimes we have an instinct to outline in the darkest shade or in black, but again, if you look at your object, you'll notice that sometimes the edge of the object is actually a lot lighter than you thought. And as you start to shade, you might realize there are some spots on your subject where the shape wasn't quite right the first time that you drew it. And you can go back and add in a little bit of finer detail there. Noticing my rim gets a little bit darker when it's not in the direct light on the top. So I'm adding some darkness there. This handle's probably too thick, so I'll end up going back with the blue to cut into it, using it like an eraser, right? And again, acrylic isn't as thick as oil paint, so for instance, this is going to take a lot of layers to really get it to that darkness where it's a lot richer, right? So we're going to have to let this dry and then come back. I'm noticing now my pot has a small rim around the edge, which is a lot darker than the rest of it, so I'm going to start adding that in. start adding in some of the lighter parts, which you might have to wait for some of the previous layers to dry before you can add in a decent amount, but we're going to get started and add some white to our mid-tone, and then go ahead and put that in. So I see on my subject that it's not really one direct light source that's hitting right here. There are multiple points where it's starting to shine, but those will be added in later when we add more detail. And while I wait for this to dry, I'll go ahead and add in some more of the background. You can see how it's getting a little darker now that we're creating more layers, right? For this part, I'm not using a small brush. It's pretty medium sized. Sometimes when you use a small brush, you're more inclined to worry about the details and that's not, we're not at that stage yet, quite yet. the towel, I'm looking at where does it cross over on my object. So from my angle, I see it's going across the handle right here. So I'm going to mark where it's going. And it kind of loops up a little bit. It doesn't really come at an angle like I had it. So now that I have the whole canvas covered, 
I can see maybe some parts I painted earlier starting to dry up. You want to let the ones that are wet completely dry, otherwise you won't get those layers. It'll just blend in with what you already have there. And now we can start adding more colors. So definitely put some white on your palette. And then go ahead and add the rest of your colors. You can just add a little bit for now, but you'll likely be using all of them. So on mine, you don't need the black, right? That was just for the demonstration. We'll have orange, blue, green, red, yellow, white. I like to work with purple too. And this is where it's really going to be important that you're looking at your subject. So. When we look at this, we think brown watering can, maybe some type of metal, right? But if you look more closely at it, you can see hints of other colors in the metal. So for instance, down here, I'm seeing some hints of red, maybe a little bit of yellow in the highlights, and then it goes up and it gets duller. I'm seeing more of a green shade along the edge. So really use your eye and notice what colors the can's picking up. And don't worry about messing up, you can always go over it. So if you see a hint of any color, just go ahead and put it on there. Go with your instincts and then we can always come back and edit it later, right? And remember your compliments, because those will help you create some less intense shades without making it too muddy. And for the first parts, I usually don't use too much water. I think it's better to just start getting the paint on the on the canvas. As I'm putting in some of these details, I'm noticing where the form isn't exactly as I drawn it, so I'm taking note of where I'll go back in for highlights later. So for example here, I have this coming at a triangle type shape, but in reality the, the handle really cuts down from my perspective. So that's when you would go in and start editing a little bit. Sometimes it's easier just to edit in white because you can add the color on top later. back in over here because I'm noticing this drops a little more straight than what I had it as. So I'm putting in those marks now. And I can edit them out with the background soon enough. Sometimes if you want to get it really close to what the color, the picture um, is showing and what your object is showing, you can kind of hold up your easel and compare it to what you're looking at. So I might compare this and think, oh, this is a little too purple. Maybe I want to add some yellow to make it less intense. And then we have more of a brown color. 
and then I'm thinking, uh, maybe it needs a little more color, but it's not purple, purple or yellow. We'll add a little bit of orange to it. And you just keep adding. It's kind of a trial and error in which colors are going to work. And usually that's more for the top layer. So once we build up the density of this photo, or of this painting, then that's when you would start to do that. It's also helpful if you've been painting for a while to kind of lean or take a step back. Sometimes you don't notice when something goes wonky until you're looking at it from a different angle. white here, not necessarily because this is white, but because it'll make it easier to go back over. It's always easier to paint something dark on something light rather than the other way around. This part's still a little wet, same with this, so I'm going to focus on the handle. And now we've gotten to a point where we can use a smaller brush, because this is a pretty fine detail to be able to get with such a large brush size. So I'm going to switch over, and now I'll be paying closer attention to what I'm seeing on the handle. pretty dry now, you can tell from touching it, that you can go back in and start to add more layers to that now. I'm going to go back to my larger brush so that because this is a smooth shape, we want the lines to be less noticeable. want to add details that you think eventually you might cover up, that's fine. I think sometimes it helps to add context to where you're painting everything, how you want to edit things further before finalizing. Usually your light isn't exactly white. Um, something to keep in mind is just to add a little bit of a duller color to it that usually makes it look more realistic.
I added water to get this brush stroke because it's a little more detailed and water helps for that smooth, clean line when you need it. Okay, so I'm getting to the point where I'm liking what I see, and for me, this is where I want to finish up. I would say some of the last steps are just making sure you have all the highlights on your painting coming out. So look at your model and then look back at your painting, and I see, okay, this is a little bit more of a rim. I'm using my small brush because it's a pretty fine area. There's a little shine right here. It's pretty bright. Maybe not that bright. You can go back in and take some of it out. And then on my rim, the top, I have it right. you really like how thick this is looking right now, how thick the paint's looking, that's going to be layers, or that's one of the reasons why a lot of people use oil paint, because it just has that thicker, juicier application to the canvas. I've gotten my painting to a point where I feel comfortable stopping. I like it how it is. And like I said before, it doesn't need to be perfect. You're just looking for what you want. And you could always work on this for days or come back to it later. Maybe later in the month you want to add in another detail or you see it hanging up in your house and you think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed that. Um, it's never too late to go back and work on it again. <laughs>